this is the biggest week for Tennessee's football program, beating rivals Florida and Alabama since. It is. And, guys, you have to – can we agree on this before we start for the standards? We're taking it in the moment. The week – you have to pretend as if nothing happened after that after that week, right? We're not taking anything into account of what happened afterward. Yes, agreed. Taking into account in the moment, it's 2016 Florida and Georgia. When Tennessee, one week after trailing Florida 21 to nothing, came back and scored 38 unanswered points and erased a, an 11-year winning streak against Florida – to get to 4-0, and then the next week, Josh Dobbs throws a Hail Mary to Jawan Jennings for Tennessee to beat Georgia in Athens to get the Vols to 5-0. It's the biggest, most exciting two-week stretch since then. Um, I know you're going to go further back. I want to address this real quick because I put it up there and maybe I shouldn't have. I put 2022 beating LSU and Alabama in back-to-back weeks. Well, that rolls. That's good. Yeah. Quality wins, that probably was. That probably beats the 2016 one because the one I'm talking about, Florida and Georgia, weren't really Florida and Georgia. But – it still mattered in a huge way when they did that. So that's why, I, for me, it's 2016, despite what happened right after that when they lost three straight. Here's why I wouldn't roll with 2016, is that it, two reasons. It took a Hail Mary, as you mentioned, and at the core, I didn't have belief in Butch Jones, which I know is probably outside the parameters of what we're asking now. But I think this is much more significant, and you would probably agree you feel more optimistic about the balls under Josh Heupel than even you did at Butch Jones at the time, or were you still kind of wondering with Butch? No, in that moment, I will say I was very optimistic about the ball, the balls for uh, this reason. And I'll be honest with you. Um, it's because that 2016 Tennessee team at that point, Dave, felt very much like the 2013 Auburn team that played for the national title. Remember how Auburn just kept getting lucky win after a lucky win? That Auburn team that played Florida State for the national title was not a top 10 team talent-wise, were they? That's my son's first year. No, I agree with that. And going back to your situation with the LSU game in 2022, we all know that Tennessee benefited from that game being kicked off at noon. In games, most oftentimes the better football team wins in a football game more than any other sport. And I'm not saying Tennessee wasn't better. that They were, but they probably weren't. 38 points better or whatever the final Yeah, they were 27 points better than LSU. Yeah, the way the 27. Sure. So, I mean, that that game went awry uh, under a coach in his first year and Brian Kelly that's still trying to bring people together. I go all the way back to 1992. And I know I'm old, but that was a, a pretty good seven-day window of beating two consecutive teams. For those that don't remember, go back to 1992, and you had Philip Fulmer entering the season, and you had the University of Tennessee beating Georgia and Florida, who were number 14 and number four in consecutive weeks. Now, we all know what happened later in that season, or at least you should. They lost three games, but we're not holding to what comes before. So, to me... You beat number seven, Alabama, and unranked Florida. I think this is the most impressive week of Tennessee football since 1992. I'm going to go back that far. It is a poll question. I'll update you on the results. But, Caleb, you're still going with the mid-2010s? I still am because of the momentum. Now, again, let's get the elephant in the room out with 92. For those who, for our younger viewers um, who don't know, Philip Fulmer was not the full-time head coach that year. The reason it was so big is he took over as the interim coach because Johnny Majors, 16-year head coach, was recovering from open-heart surgery. Tennessee had an interim coach, and they were supposed to be rebuilding because that was Heath Shuler's first year as a starter. And they go to visit Georgia as two touchdown underdogs and then host Florida as an underdog, too. Um and win both games and actually blow out Florida. Now, I don't know if the rain had anything to do with that, but um, you were there. You could tell me if the rain just slowed Florida's down, Florida's offense down under Steve Spurrier in that game. It did. It was just one of those weird games in that series where oftentimes the uh, team just doesn't show up. That, you know, that game, it just seems like that series that a team didn't show up once every two or three years. One of the other teams, and – um there's a million different reasons for that, and it was more times than Tennessee. 
Here's why I go back to 1992 and I skip past Butch and I skip past 2022 for another reason. Because that gave you a glimpse into the future with Philip Fulmer. So after those two wins, certainly Tennessee went back to Johnny Majors, but you got a glimpse of what Philip Fulmer could be if he was a head coach and eventually was a national championship head coach. The difference with the Butch Jones situation is I didn't think that was the case. The difference is tw- with 2022 and now is I do, I'm, I'm reaffirmed. In 2022, I thought Tennessee caught LSU on a bad day and their offense took a lot of foes by surprise. You can't say that that happened this past week of football. They won in a whole different way. So the correlation I would draw to 1992 is when I saw what happened in 1992 under Philip Fulmer, I was like, that guy's a pretty good coach. You're going to have a decision to make with Johnny Majors. And as, as it ended up, Johnny Majors probably made that decision largely for the University of Tennessee. But I come away from this game, this seven-day series, seven-day streak of two wins, against Tennessee's most bitter rivals. And here's what I think to myself. I, I'm, I'm reaffirmed once again that Josh Heupel is going to win a championship and probably a national championship. So that would be the other reason that I value this a little bit more than Butch. You can vote on it on our YouTube page right now. And we remind you, today's tough question brought to you by Banks & Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney, banksandjones.com you guys are surprising me a little bit on the youtube poll give me 30 seconds and remember banks and jones they don't settle banksandjones.com why banks and jones well it's because they're tennessee's trial attorney you can play to win with banks and jones because they'll go to trial you've heard of other lawyers they say they'll go to trial and fight for you they won't They just want to settle. That's the easiest way out. Well, that's not Banks and Jones, led by T. Scott Jones. They won't settle. They'll go to trial for you. Tennessee's trial attorney. They play to win. Truly, Tennessee's trial attorney when it comes to criminal defense or personal injury. Why settle? It's Banks and Jones. T. Scott Jones. Banks and Jones. All right, so poll question. Beating Florida, Bama, in back-to-back weeks is the most exciting two-week stretch for Tennessee since LSU, Alabama in 2022, getting 78% of the vote. 2016, Florida, Georgia, getting 14% of the vote. And then I think our listeners might not be as old as me because 1992 was a really big deal. And I think it made those power brokers at Tennessee think, hey, there's an option other than Johnny Majors, who I love, Caleb, than the coach who makes a lot of boosters mad. Yeah, so... Uh, you know, and I wanted to ask you about that with majors too. Um, you've seen this before, where and I've seen it one time. I think I remember when uh, Tampa Bay and the NFL won a Dirk Cutter. Uh, they didn't want to lose him as their offensive coordinator, so they went ahead and fired Lovey Smith to hire Dirk Cutter um, full time. Do you think part of the firing of majors was just that they didn't want to lose Fulmer as a staff member because he was going to get a head coaching job somewhere else if Major stayed on? Well, yeah. I mean, once you showcase your skills and you beat Florida and Georgia in September and then the team kind of comes apart without you, I still believe that um, that showcase to be able to go out there and show your wares was a monster factor for Tennessee. I don't think there's any question about that. If you if they go one and one in those games, I think Johnny Majors retains his job and Philip Vormer coaches elsewhere. I, I, I think, think there were about, and, and I've gone through this with Mike Strange. You remember him? He covered Tennessee at the time. Yep. And he gave me, we were on a some uh, trip back from Starkville or wherever we were. And there were like 13 things that had to happen for that transition to happen. From majors, part of it was a heart attack, of course, from majors to former. But he said a big part of that was the fact that Philip Fulmer went out there and won those two games. If that wouldn't have been the case, Maybe it's something different altogether. Chattanooga Mortgage, congratulations. Your home search just got easier. Buying a home in Chattanooga has never been easier. They'll help you clean up your credit as well. Chat Mortgage, chat with two Ts, mortgage.com. Tell them that Dave Hooker and Off the Hook Sports sent you. So, Caleb, 
that truly determined Tennessee's football future. So as amazing as what Tennessee has done over the past week, I would still take that as tops overall. So would you take that as tops over this Florida Bama win in the past week? And let's be honest too. This is not your Nick Saban, Alabama Crimson Tide. They're still very good. Tennessee, Tennessee still played great, but this was not like beating them in 2022. No, no, it wasn't at all. But also it was, um, there were, you know, this Alabama roster is still very good. And, and when you come to perspective, I mean, yes, it's not Nick Saban's Alabama, but you could say when Tennessee was getting beaten by Nick Saban's Alabama every year, this is not your average Alabama because this was just an unheralded, like unprecedented dynasty where Alabama hired the best coach in football at a time where college football's parity was at its absolute worst. So it was really, really, really hard to kind of break through. So I don't think that's, you know, you could say it's not Nick Saban's Alabama, but I don't think Nick Saban's Alabama is possible to be replicated ever again in this sport. 